This video is made for deck officers who are working on the tankers or scheduled to join soon. I sincerely appreciate your patience and persistence in watching up to this point. Let's now begin part six, the final segment of the COPT series. Ugh. All right, now take a look at this. This little picture right here, it really says it all. I think it pretty much sums things up. If the steam pressure is sufficient, then the COPT exhaust pressure, or more specifically the vacuum pressure inside the condenser, should be able to maintain a proper vacuum level as needed. But on the flip side, if the steam pressure is too low or insufficient, then the vacuum pressure in the condenser will start to weaken. Not too hard to understand, right? Not too, too hard, hard to understand, understand right? right? Now let's take a look at the CCR panel of a vessel, where each pump has its own exhaust pressure gauge installed. We can see that pump number 3 is currently running at around 1000 RPM, while pump number 1 and number 2 are operating at lower speeds, somewhere around 800 RPM or even less. Now if we take a close look at the gauges on the exhaust line, you'll notice something interesting. The vacuum pressure for pump number one and number two is actually higher than that of pump number three. All right, now let's think this through carefully. Let's say the steam supplied from the boiler is around 14 kg, and let's assume that same pressure is also reaching the steam ejector. That same 14 kg is also being delivered to COPT, number one, number two, and number three. But as you can see in the video, even though the RPMs of the pumps are somewhat similar, the vacuum pressures on the exhaust lines aren't exactly the same. You probably have a rough idea of what's going on here, right? If you look closely, you'll notice that pump number three is running at a higher RPM, around 1000, compared to the other two pumps. This means the governor valve on COPT number three is currently more open than those on number one and number two, allowing more steam to flow in. As a result, a greater volume of steam is being discharged through the exhaust line. That's why the vacuum pressure in the exhaust line of COPT number three is lower compared to the other two COPT. The steam pressure being supplied to the steam ejector, which helps maintain vacuum in the condenser, has remained steady at 14 kg. Then, when I slightly reduce the RPMs of pump number one and number two, I notice that the amount of steam being discharged into the exhaust line decreased. As a result, the vacuum pressure actually became stronger. In other words, because less steam is being released from COPT number one and number two, their exhaust lines are now being more directly influenced by the vacuum condenser, hence the increase in vacuum pressure. Hoo hoo. I hope I'm not making this too complicated. Honestly, even I feel a little confused explaining it. But I hope it still made sense to you. Just a moment. Yeah, <laughs> All right, let's head into the room of truth and go over everything with this reference diagram. Currently, the boiler pressure is at 13.5 kg. Steam is being supplied through the main steam line to all three COPTs, number one, number two, and number three, running them simultaneously. At the same time, the steam ejector is working hard to maintain vacuum inside the condenser by pulling out the air. So now, using this diagram, let me walk you through the story you just saw in the video. Now let me walk you through a simple imaginary story to help explain this better. Let's say the vacuum condenser, thanks to the steam ejector, can handle about 6,000 bits of steam per minute. And since there are three exhaust lines, we'll assume each line can take up to 2,000 bits of steam per minute. COPT number three is running at 1,000 RPM and is releasing about 1,000 bits of steam per minute through its exhaust line. COPT number one and number two are running at 800 RPM, but when the boiler pressure drops slightly, we reduce their RPM to around 700. As a result, the boiler gradually starts to recover pressure. And because less steam is being discharged from COPT number one and two, you'll notice the vacuum pressure on the exhaust gauge is rising slightly. That's the condenser working more efficiently with a lighter steam load. 
So here's what's happening. As the boiler pressure increases, the efficiency of the steam ejector improves. This in turn causes the pressure inside the vacuum condenser to drop even further. Now, when the COPT is running at 1000 RPM, it discharges more steam through the exhaust line. But at 800 or 700 RPM, the amount of steam being released is noticeably less. That's why the vacuum pressure affecting the exhaust lines of CO, PT, number one, and number two is stronger. They're releasing less steam, which means the vacuum effect on their exhaust lines is greater. All right, let's keep going with our little example. Say each exhaust line can take in up to 2,000 bits of steam per minute. If one line is only pushing out 1,000 bits, then there's still room or vacuum power for another 1,000 bits to be pulled in. Now, if that line is only pushing out 800 bits of steam, the vacuum has even more pulling power left, around 1200 bits. Since the vacuum condenser is trying to suck equally through all the lines, the amount of steam each one is releasing actually affects how strong the vacuum pressure is inside that line. So basically, the less steam going out, the stronger the vacuum pressure you'll see there. If you're watching this with that basic understanding in mind, everything should make sense right away. Yes, I see. I tried to explain it clearly, but yeah, maybe I twisted myself up a little there. One, two, three, four, cha-cha-cha. All right, let's call it a wrap for this part. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Ah, I did Still confused. Is there anyone out there thinking, nope, still don't get it? If that's you, no worries. Just watch this video one more time. Seriously, with this COPT stuff, it usually clicks on the second watch. You'll probably find yourself going, Ah, now I get it. And, hey, if you're the curious type, here's an idea. Next time you're free, take a walk down to the engine room. Start at the boiler, follow the steam line through the COPT, and end at the vacuum condenser. It might just turn into one of those cool hands-on memories you won't forget. And I've got one more final clip prepared for you. Don't think of it as boring. Just treat it like hands-on training. I'd really appreciate it if you gave this extra segment a watch. All right then. Chief Officer, are you ready? Let's roll. Let's go. Hi there, Chief Officer Ding Dong here. From this point on, I'll be taking over the explanation. Hello everyone, let's begin our hands-on practice session. Hey guys, so this ship is a VLCC tanker running on 18K boilers. Right now we're in the middle of cargo discharge and both boilers are up and running. But here's the thing. One of the boilers keeps tripping, which makes the steam pressure go up and down like crazy. In this video, we're going to take a look at how the exhaust line pressure reacts to those changes. And you can actually see it all through the exhaust line pressure gauge. You're going to want to see this boiler pressure bouncing, gauges reacting. It's all right here. All right, let's get into it. So right now, Boiler number one is up and running, and the RPM for cargo pumps, number one, two, and three is sitting at around 600. Let's try bumping up the RPM a little. As we start increasing the RPMs for COPT number one, two, and three, you'll notice the boiler pressure starts to dip slightly, and along with that, the vacuum gets a bit weaker too. When that happens, it's a good idea to pause for a moment. We don't want to push things too hard when the steam pressure isn't keeping up. So let the pressure build back up a bit before you continue adjusting the RPM. Boiler number two just started up and the steam pressure is now at its peak, right at the upper limit of the usable range. So I've been slowly increasing the RPM. But uh-oh, 
Boiler number two suddenly trips, just shuts down out of nowhere. Welp, nothing we can do now, but bring the RPM back down to a safe level. We were on our way up, but yeah, gotta play it safe when something like this happens. Just a moment ago, the steam pressure was at 13 kg, but now it's gradually dropping 12.5 and now down to 11.5 kg. If you take a close look at the two gauges, you'll notice that the vacuum pressure has weakened quite a bit compared to earlier. Uh ooh, come on! Now the steam pressure's all the way down to 11 kg? Seriously? We just got started! Alright, alright, time to back it down. We gotta drop the pump RPM to the lowest safe setting. Officially, the remote minimum is 600, but I'll ease it down to 700 for now, just to be safe. Or hey, don't overthink it. Just slam it straight to 600 and chill. Let the steam pressure do its thing and come back up. All right, after holding steady like this for a bit, boiler number two has kicked back in and the steam pressure is starting to recover. So now I'm going to increase the RPM of each pump by 50, raising them from 700 up to 750. The steam mainline pressure is now over 15 kg. It's up to 15.5. All right, that means it's time to raise the RPM again. Uh, yo. Yo, listen up, crew. Let me break it down quick. COPT, yeah, that's the main trick. If you're standing watching the CCR, you better know the system or you won't get it. Ugh, what's going on now? The steam pressure keeps dropping again. And as you can see, the vacuum pressure is getting weaker too. Well, what can you do? I'm bringing the RPM back down again, and yeah, I guess we just wait it out for now. After waiting a bit, we can see the steam pressure starting to rise again, and along with it, the vacuum is getting stronger too. So once things stabilize and the steam pressure recovers to a decent level, I'll go ahead and raise the RPM again. But for now, not much is changing. Pressure's still kind of flat. Ah, but here we go again. The boiler's tripping, shutting down, then kicking back in over and over. Yeah, it's getting a bit annoying, to be honest. Steam's flowing heavy, turbine on blast. You miss one step and you might not last. But don't stress out, you'll catch the vibe. Once you get it down, man, it's a smooth ride. Know it, learn it, yeah, that's the key. COPT, knowledge set your mind free if you're here right now. Boiler number two is back up and running, and steam pressure is rising again. All right then, shall we go ahead and bring the pump RPM back up too? You who? So far, everything looks okay. Steam pressure and vacuum pressure both seem to be holding steady for now. Please, dear boiler, let's just make it through this run. No more tripping, all right? Just keep it going nice and smooth. Oops, come on, not again. Boiler number two tripped and now the pressure's dropping. Welp, here we go again. Just gonna ease the RPM down and wait. Right now we're at 700. It looked like the pressure was starting to climb just a little, but nope, still unstable, and now it's fading again, losing strength, slowly but surely. In this kind of condition, all you can do is wait. So, we wait. We wait. It's a long and painfully slow battle. After lowering the RPM to reduce steam consumption, the boiler pressure dropped a bit, but now it's showing some stability within a certain range. And slowly, it's starting to recover. Bit by bit, the pressure is coming back. And so, we wait. There's nothing else we can do but wait until boiler number two fully recovers. Finally, boiler number two has recovered. Steam pressure is right where we need it, and the vacuum inside the condenser, which had weakened earlier, is now back to a solid level. All right then, let's go ahead and start ramping up the pump RPM for real this time. All right, do you see that? Steam pressure still looks good for now. Okay, let's keep pushing and raise the RPM step by step. Whew. 
Wow. Now that the boiler's supplying enough steam, even as the COPT consumes more, the steam pressure barely drops, it's holding steady. At this point, we can keep pushing the COPT RPM up toward the maximum operating range as long as we keep an eye on the steam mainline pressure gauge and the vacuum levels. All right, that's going to do it for now. This has been Chief Officer Ding Dong. Thanks for watching. This wraps up our COPT journey with a happy ending. Thank you for watching all the way through. I truly appreciate your time and attention. May you be blessed with good health and safe voyages wherever you go. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.